Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel H&E Life. I'm Dr. Cindy Wong and today I would like to continue where I left off last time which is talking about common diagnoses that is made in the esophagus. Okay, so let's get started with reflux esophagitis. As you can see here, we have some squamous epithelium with some lamina propria, so all together squamous mucosa followed by glandular mucosa. And let's look at what kind of epithelium this glandular mucosa has. It has this very pink apical mucin, which makes it foveolar epithelium. So this is portion of stomach, which is commonly known as the cardia, which is the portion of stomach that is junction with the squamous mucosa at the gastroesophageal junction, the EGJ. And cardiotype mucosa, usually with antrotype mucosa, which means they have uh, mucin glands and it's not really acid secreting. Sorry, let me turn this around so it's right side up. Within the cardia mucosa, it's okay to have some chronic inflammation. So you're allowed to have some plasma cells and some lymphocytes and some eosinophils. But similar to any other mucosa of the GI tract, it's not okay to have neutrophils. And unlike other parts of the stomach mucosa, when you have truly antral mucosa from the antrum or from the pylorus, or you have occipital mucosa from the body or the fundus of the stomach, having lamina propria inflammation like this is definitely not okay. But within the cardia, you could forgive some amount of inflammation, but if it's too prominent or you have neutrophils and have active inflammation, that cannot be forgiven. All right, so I said that this is a biopsy of reflux. So let's talk about the features of reflux. Let's go back to this piece. Features of reflux esophagitis is basically looking for features of reactive epithelium. So what are the reactive changes? You have hyperplasia of the basal layer. Uh, what I mean by this is the basal layers tend to get thicker and you have these larger, darker round nuclei that goes higher up than just the one cell layer at the bottom. So this one goes up one, two, three, for maybe five layers up depending on where you're looking. So this is thickening of the basal layer. Another common feature in association with epithelial reactivity, the finding of these uh, papillae within the epithelium that goes far up. Normal location of papillae should be no more than one third or one half up your full length of your epithelium. So if this is the full length of the epithelium, the papillae should normally be around down here. But as you can see, these papillae reach very high up into the epithelium where it's probably located in the upper two thirds of the epithelium. This elongation of the papillae is a common association with reactive features. And another finding that would suggest reflux esophagitis is if you have some amount of active inflammation. So let's look around here. Once again, you see that this area, you have increase of the basal layer, you have papillae that go very high up into the epithelium, and you have inflammation. Once again, we see these ants, which are neutrophils, all of these, this one, this one, this one, this, 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 these are all neutrophils. And with the combination with the neutrophils, the increase in the basal layer and the elongation of the papillae, these are all features that would be found in reflux esophagitis. Other findings could be eosinophils instead of neutrophils, or you could see a combination of both eosinophils and neutrophils. So for example, right here, you have an intraepithelial eosinophil and over here, you have an abundance of intraepithelial neutrophils. And um, again, up here, you have some neutrophils up here. So all taken all together, you could call this active esophagitis consistent with reflux changes. But usually, we'll just call it reflux esophagitis if the features are all there. And now let's just quickly take a look at gastric mucosa that's here at the GEJ. As you can see, this the foveolar epithelium seems a little not as pink as you would normally think of healthy foveolar epithelium. Normally, you'll see an abundance of these apical, very lightly pink mucin droplets, but instead they're kind of mucin depleted. As you can see, all of this apical droplets are kind of just tiny or disappearing altogether. And then the nuclei here on these glands are also a little darkened. So these also suggest some sort of reactive changes. And we zoom in, we'll look around to see what may be causing these reactive changes. And once again, we see ants and you see here's a neutrophil, here's a neutrophil, here's another neutrophil. And over here, again, you can see more neutrophils and all these features together. If this was the only thing you found, then it will be cardiotype mucosa with active gastritis, or taken all together, you could call this whole junction squamocolumnar mucosa with features of reflux. 
Another very, very, very common thing that pathologists evaluate in the esophagus, especially around the GEJ, is for Barrett's. So in Barrett's is a long-standing response to reflux esophagitis. And when you have a lot of reflux, you have increased acid in the junction, your normal squamous mucosa doesn't like acid. So it kind of transforms more into your foveolar epithelium. And when you have that happen, that helps the esophagus withstand long-standing acid. Then the foveolar epithelium would then start getting features of uh, intestinal epithelium. Feature of intestinal epithelium is goblet cells. So if we look at this portion, you can still see the apical small mucin droplets. So these are still foveolar epithelium. But let's look around and, oh, wait a minute. This area looks totally different, right? So within this area, you still have your little lightly pink foveolar epithelium, but within this foveolar epithelium, all of a sudden you start to have these larger, uh, sort of translucent, grayish, large mucin droplets. So these are the goblet cells. And when you have this occurring within foveolar epithelium, that that is called intestinal metaplasia. Piece of biopsy like this, which has some squamous, which has some foveolar, will be, once again, squamo-columnar epithelium with intestinal metaplasia. And intestinal metaplasia is a sign on the pathology side saying to the clinicians, hey, if you see on endoscopy that there's a regular Z-line, which is basically what the endoscopists see as the GJ, or if they see salmon colored patches within the distal esophagus near the Z-line, that means this is truly esophagus and having this intestinal metaplasia, and that is the definition with endoscopic findings, that is when you can say that this patient has Barrett's esophagus. And having this Barrett's esophagus is a very worrying thing because it has the chance of progressing into dysplasia and into adenocarcinoma of the esophagus. So patients with Barrett's esophagus are followed very closely. And Barrett's esophagus is quite common diagnosis in the U.S. because there is a lot of patients in the U.S. that have reflux esophagitis. And when you have long-standing reflux, then these patients have a chance of progressing to Barrett's. And when you have Barrett's, these patients then have a chance of progressing into adenocarcinoma. Okay, so I think I will stop here for today. I covered two very common findings in the distal esophagus slash GJ. So next time I'm going to cover two of the most common malignant diagnoses of the esophagus. Please like and subscribe, especially hit the notification bell so you will be notified whenever I post a new video. And I will see everyone next time. Bye!